we're going to move on to is uh, what sometimes is referred to as the central dogma of biology, um, which is kind of a, a funny um, expression. Uh, but what it's really discussing is what we refer to as gene expression. Okay, And so uh, that's going to take up the next block of material. And it's incredibly important to how cells function, the function or purpose of DNA, of RNA, and then leading to the proteins within the cell. And so that's the idea of the, what's called the central dogma, is that DNA as chromosomes code for information. That information very specifically is broken down into units along a chromosome. So along the chromosome, we have a whole bunch of sections of information. Okay. And each little section of information along the chromosome is called a gene. So gene 1, gene 2, gene 3, gene 4, and so on. So each chromosome has a large number of genes, different numbers of genes on different chromosomes uh, and for different organisms. Some genes are very long, some genes are very short, some chromosomes have many, and some chromosomes have few. The gene is a bit of DNA information that is going to code for, very specifically, uh, a piece of RNA. So hopefully you remember the differences between DNA and RNA. If not, you should go back and look at the chemistry uh, lecture on DNA structure and RNA. Uh, they are very similar to one another. Uh, RNA in the nucleotide, the biochemistry of the nucleotide, the sugar is slightly different. It's almost exactly the same. It has one different nitrogenous base. It has uracil instead of thymine. If you go back and also look at that, you'll see they're also very similar, though, to one another. RNA, though, exists as single strands, and we're going to get into later the types of RNA um, that come from these genes. So all genes don't code for the same kind of RNA. Some code for what we'll refer to as messenger, some code for transfer, and some code for ribosomal RNA. So there's these three main different types of RNA. There are other types of RNA as well, but these are the three main ones that we'll, we'll focus on, and genes code for those. Now, that's not the end of it. The RNA then goes out into the cytoplasm. So RNA is also going to be single-stranded, whereas DNA is double-stranded. Uh, RNA goes out into the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, all these different types of RNA are going to work together uh, to build polypeptides. And those polypeptides will ultimately gain function and become proteins. All right, and that's kind of what we see here in this little joint. This is representing a, a chromosome. This little section here is representing a single gene. That single gene is uh, what we call transcribed. <clears throat> the process that we're going to talk about now, really, is, is called transcription. So in transcription, that's where we copy the DNA into the RNA. Okay, that's, that's this. Then that RNA works with the other types of RNA, depending on what type it is, and ultimately makes a polypeptide or, or protein. That process here is called, this process here, is called translation. All right, and so that's this process. That's where we go from the RNA, label that again here, RNA, that's this, to the polypeptide or, or protein. Uh, ultimately, the protein will gain function. It might be a membrane protein. It might be an enzyme. It might go back to organize the DNA. It might be a transcription factor, which is something we'll talk about. It might organize the DNA. It might be released from the cell. Thousands, thousands of possibilities of what is that protein and what does it do? What's its job? Um, and that's not what we're getting into. We're just going to cover this, these two processes overall. Transcription first, then translation. Okay. And Overall, we collectively call this whole entire thing gene expression, although some people, again, refer to it as the central dogma. So if you hear that term, somebody says, have you studied the central dogma? You say, no, I don't, I don't know what that is. Well, you have. You've studied gene expression, and that is that is what we're talking about. It's this process, DNA to RNA, RNA to, to protein, essentially. But what we're going to get into right now um, specifically is the process of transcription. And you should have already studied and reviewed the material on DNA replication. Okay. So if you have studied the material on DNA replication, this should be very straightforward. Uh, if you haven't studied 
DNA replication yet, then there's going to be some things that aren't going to make sense because I'm just going to be referring to the DNA replication process. And so if you don't know that process, then this isn't going to make as much sense uh, to you. So what we have is double-stranded DNA representing the chromosome. Okay, so this is our double-stranded DNA. Now somewhere along this double-stranded DNA is going to be the beginning of every gene. So at the very start of every single gene, let's just randomly say right here, this is going to be the starting region for one of these particular genes. That starting region is going to have a specific DNA sequence. This TATA is common at the start of every single gene in every single organism that we know. There might be some very peculiar exceptions, that, but in general, this is what we, uh, what we say, that this region here at the start of each gene, which is called the promoter region, the promoter region is a region of DNA that contains this sequence, TATA. And so that's going to be the start of a gene. So that's the first part. Now, what has to happen is this is double-stranded DNA. It's going to be copied into a single-strand piece of RNA. So the first thing that's going to occur are certain proteins are going to come in here, and they're going to attach. These proteins are called transcription factors. So transcription factors are proteins. And these proteins will bind to the DNA at the promoter region. Now, there are all different kinds of transcription factors. These transcription factors are what uh, regulate gene, the process of gene expression. Uh, whether you have, so step back a second, you have all the same genes in all the cells of your body. So whether it's your eye or your toe uh, or a cell in your brain, all the same DNA, but the cells aren't the same. That's because the cells are expressing different genes. What controls the genes that are expressed are the transcription factors. If the transcription factor is present and can bind to the beginning of a gene, then it potentially then can be read and transcribed into RNA and, and so on. If there's no transcription factor for a particular gene, then the gene is silent. It's just sitting there. It's not being read. The information is present, but nothing happens with it. Okay, so we need the transcription factors. There are all different kinds. You can study this in a lot of detail, the different structures of transcription factors and so on, but that's not, that's not really what we're getting into. I just want you to know there is such a thing called a transcription factor. It's a protein. It has to bind to the promoter. Now, to that transcription factor will bind then the enzyme RNA polymerase. So remember, in DNA replication, we have DNA polymerase, and now we have RNA polymerase. Now, the thing is, in DNA replication, you had to have all these extra proteins and all these enzymes to perform all these jobs. The nice thing about this process, the process of transcription, is that RNA polymerase is going to pretty much carry out all those jobs. Some of those jobs included this double-stranded DNA is held together with hydrogen bonds. The RNA pol polymerase will break the hydrogen bonds. Now, there's no primer needed. If you remember the primer and primase in DNA replication, that primer was a little piece of RNA. It was made by an RNA polymerase. So the primase enzyme is an RNA polymerase. So it doesn't need an extra one. It can do it, it can do it itself. So no primer needed. The rules are going to be the same as it was in DNA replication. So this RNA polymerase is going to read the DNA three prime to five prime, and it will make now RNA in a five prime to three prime direction. So again, if you're not sure what that means, you need to go back because I've explained that all with the, the DNA replication aspect. But what's going to essentially happen here then is uh, this enzyme would then be working along the DNA. So I'll kind of break this apart here a little bit. So in this region here, we have the DNA now pulled apart. 
Okay, so the DNA, the two strands of DNA have been ripped apart. They're not hydrogen bound together. And what would happen is this piece of, or this RNA polymerase along one of these strands would be building a piece of RNA. The thing is that little piece of RNA isn't going to stay attached to the DNA uh, permanently. It's just going to temporarily be there so that if the DNA has a sequence of, let's see, T, A, C, C, A, T, G, that's just a piece of it. As the RNA polymerase works, it'll be reading this. This would have to be going three to five prime. And it'll be making then a new piece of RNA, five prime to three prime. So it would put in an A here, but here it would put in a, a U, right? G, G, again, a U here, an A, a C. So much of it is similar to the DNA replication process, but instead we have U's instead of T's. These bonds here that will occur, these hydrogen, hydrogen bonds that occur between um, these uh, nucleotides uh, are going to be temporary. They will be broken, and then this piece of RNA, this new RNA, will detach from the DNA, and then the DNA will just go back together again. So the two strands of DNA will just re-hydrogen bond with one another. Ultimately, when this process ends, you'll just have a piece of RNA with a you know, five prime end and a three prime end. This process is gonna happen in the nucleus. And that's where all this is going to happen. The RNA in the nucleus will then be modified in some way. It will be changed into one of these specific types, the messenger, the transfer, or the ribosomal RNA. And once it is converted into its final working form, it will then leave the nucleus and go out into the cytoplasm. When that happens, we'll then begin the next part of this process called translation. That's the part where the uh, RNA is then going to be um, read by the other part types of RNA, and you're going to make a polypeptide. So that's where that's going to occur. So we'll, we'll get into that next. So the next thing we're going to do is talk about the this piece of RNA, how it becomes one of these different types of RNA. So this is just an overview of the process called transcription, the part where we copy a single gene, not the entire chromosome, just one single unit of a single chromosome. So we make a short piece of single-stranded RNA in the nucleus, and it is RNA polymerase that pretty much does the, the entire job. Uh, we also need transcription factors, though, to find and bind to the promoter to get the whole thing started. So it's a little more simple than the replication part. So um, next part is going to be types of RNA.